images can be misleading, and here's an example of how. Imagine a hiker who comes to the edge of a swift flowing river he must cross. A sign at the water's edge reads, average depth, three feet. Since he's more than six feet tall, he's not worried and begins to ford the river. Halfway across the river and knee deep in water, he takes a step and falls into a deep hole and is swept away. Unfortunately, our hiker misinterpreted what average depth truly means, not realizing that the river's actual depth at any point could be far from average. This is what Stanford University professor Sam Savage calls the flaw of averages. Just like our hiker, many investors misinterpret average rates of return and sometimes with disastrous consequences. Few investments ever earn their average long-term return in any given year. They tend to be much more volatile and earn significantly more or less. Take the S&P 500's annual return since 1926, which have averaged around 10%. Yet in all that time, the S&P never earned 10%. As you can see, returns were all over the place, with lots of significant ups and downs. Only five years were even close to a 10% return. Most of us would be delighted with a 10% long-term return, but coping with the roller coaster ride that produced that 10% can be tough. All too many investors panic and sell, significantly lowering their average returns. The ups and downs of the market can also lead to very different outcomes depending on when you invest and for how long. For example, let's take a hypothetical $1 million portfolio that grows on average 10% per year. Let's also assume that we withdraw $9,000 adjusted for inflation every month from this portfolio to cover living expenses for the next 15 years. The plan would look something like this. You would run out of money in exactly 15 years. Now let's look at what really happened. If we assume the same $1 million investment and $9,000 monthly withdrawal, and look at all the 15-year periods between 1926 and 2011, 55% of the time, the money lasted at least 15 years. And if you were really lucky, in the best case scenario, your $1 million grew to more than $6 million. However, 45% of the time, you ran out of money early. In the worst case, your money was gone by the fourth year. Imagine entering retirement thinking that you are set for the next 15 years, only to be broke less than four years later. This would not only be shocking, it would be life altering. Few of us would ever implement a plan with a 45% chance of failure. And while we can never get to 100% certainty, we'd feel much more confident with plans that give us an 80 or 90% probability of achieving our goals. Don't let your retirement plan get swept away because of an average return assumption. Work with a financial advisor who uses tools such as Monte Carlo simulation that account for the variability in returns. Good planning is an ongoing and dynamic process between you and your advisor. So don't settle for the flaw of average. Create a sound plan that helps minimize uncertainty and maximize your potential for future success.